I'm not anyone. I'm just a fucking girl in Southern California who's like on her queen shit right now. <laughs> Hello, you guys. <laughs> so much to catch you up on. First of all, my name is Paisley. If this is your first video seeing me, hi, welcome. So happy that you're here. A little rundown of what the fuck has been going on. So I was living in New Zealand for the past year and a half. Came back home to Southern California in January. Was originally supposed to move to Hawaii to be with my family who lives there. And now I'm in California staying here indefinitely because things have just been crazily falling into place for me. So feels good. So I'm currently in my own studio apartment that cosmically, amazingly just landed into my lap, which is insane because if you know Ventura or in Southern California in general, the housing market is freaking bonkers. So it's really insane to like, one, try to find a place, two, try to find one that's like affordable, like rooms to rent or like going for 1200 a month, which is psychotic. A room, not even like your own space. I feel very blessed to be in the space that I'm in. I'm renting from one of my old bosses that I used to work for at a restaurant here in Ventura. So beyond grateful for that. My sweet Olive is just napping over there. So before I get into any of the crazy details, I do have to talk about a brand that I've been working with. This construction. <laughs> just wanted to give a huge thank you to the brand Ana Luis for sending me some jewelry. They're a sustainable jewelry brand based in New York City. Really incredible pieces. They're just like the daintiest little pieces. I'm wearing two of their pieces right now. I've been wearing these like crazy. I put them on my Instagram. They're literally the best pieces for just everyday wear, for styling, to dress up, dress down, whatever. I'm seriously obsessed with them. Just what I wear every single day. Like I literally have not taken them out of my ear for like three weeks now. Yes, so pretty. So this is more of like a dressy little number. These are my absolute favorites. This is the one that I styled in my Instagram reel, which you saw, just like these emerald pieces. Oh my gosh, these emerald earrings, so beautiful. I'm very much so a simple jewelry gal. We are having a Mother's Day sale, so I'll leave my link in the description box. Literally, it's gonna be the first thing that you see in the description box down below, so make sure you click on it and get their sale going. And the sale is incredible. It's buy one piece, get the other piece 40% off, so make her day and yours. Get yourself a piece too. One piece for her, one piece for you. Buy one, get one 40% off, like literally, how can you say no to that? <laughs> Something that's sustainable, beautiful, timeless. She'll love it. You'll love it. I literally can't recommend this brand enough. And they have been so kind and courteous with working with me, sending me pieces and being so patient with my busy schedule, which I will get into. But thank you again, Ana Luis, for sharing such beautiful pieces. I can't wait to continue to wear these. I get compliments on them like anytime I'm wearing them, which is literally every day. I also hike during the week for one of my jobs, which I'll let you know about, and they're perfect for athletic wear. They just feel really good. Get your mama something special. Moving on, a huge life update. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where I left you. I think the last video was just like a day in my life and I was just like cruising in California and I was staying at the very first place that I was staying at in California. Olive is really wanting to play right now. Baby, can you go play by yourself? Is that possible? Here's my coffee, it's too early for this. Yeah, so I was just cruising in California. I think that at a point, I didn't even know if I was like still gonna be staying in California or not. We'll see what happens. I'm not, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I don't know, I've just been like really following my intuition on what feels like a full body yes and what feels like it's in alignment to what I need. Since I've been out here, like I've been alluding to, that everything's been falling into place for me. So I just recently got basically a full-time job at this fitness retreat center in Malibu, which is literally a dream. The property is so gorgeous. So I used to teach yoga for them right before I left for New Zealand for the first time around, right in 2019. No, actually it was for the second time around because COVID was a thing at that point. I love teaching for them. It was really brief, short, whatever. It was great though. I love the people there. I love the property. Get your toy. No parking. So when I got back to California and then I realized that I was going to be staying a little bit longer than I was planning to, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to start to need to get a job. I didn't work for two months. I'm just really grateful that I saved a lot of money was able to be kind of self-sustainable for two months without any work. I really needed that time off to decompress after going through a breakup, after leaving my life in New Zealand and going through grievances and literally stepping into my own as an individual single woman is kind of fucking nuts and gnarly after being with someone that you literally thought that you were gonna have babies and marry. Like that's not just, that's not just a cakewalk, you know what I mean? But I do have to say I have been handling it a lot better than breakups in the past. Like 
breakups in the past for me have been like earth shattering, heartbreaking. I couldn't even like function or I think I've stepped into my worth a lot more and I can talk more about that, but I just want to give you the scoop of like what the fuck I'm doing. I reached back out to the directors of operation at the, the retreat center in Malibu and was like, hey, I'm back in town, would love to teach yoga for you. And then she reached out to me saying, are you interested in hiking? And then we also need people on the weekends to help check guests in and out. And I'm like, hell yeah, I need all the work I can get. That kind of just fell into my lap. So now I'm leading hikes during the week for the retreat center because it's a week long program. It's all about resetting, it's a plant-based, program too and then they're also hiking five days a week they have fitness classes in the afternoon and also yoga so i am hiking with them thursday friday and monday and on the weekends i'm teaching yoga and helping check guests in and out which is literally a dream so i'm literally getting paid to take care of people and hike through the santa monica mountains every day <laughs> like i'm averaging like 30 miles a week which is crazy I don't think I've ever averaged 30 miles a week in my entire fucking life, so this is crazy. My ass is looking phenomenal, if I do say so myself. I digress. Pay, I have to say, isn't the most phenomenal. It's like, it's good for what it is, but living in California, Southern California that is, as a single woman on my own in my own space, I definitely needed more money, so it's so crazy. I was like talking to my friend Jules, who's my best friend out here. It would be so nice to be able to pick up at the restaurant that I used to work at but I, I was gonna like reach out to my manager, my past manager, and like see if I can pick up some shifts there or whatever, maybe even just be on call. And then literally that morning, I run into her at a coffee shop and she's like, do you want your old job back? And I'm like, yeah. That was pretty cosmic. I thought I was only gonna be picking up shifts from them, like literally on call, but now I'm on the schedule four days a week. So I am averaging like 70 hours a week of work right now, which is freaking crazy and a lot. I've always been like that though. Like if you know me, I've always been like having three jobs and also going to school full time or like whatever, kind of a workaholic. It's a little bit toxic, but also I actually really needed money because I was obviously hemorrhaging money when I wasn't working and then moving into this new space and literally having to start from scratch, like buying everything i'm talking every everything my bed frame the furniture the plates i'm eating off of glassware to you know pots pans all the things luckily i am a thrift hoe i've been thrifting quite a bit like i've thrifted nearly like everything in this apartment and i'm really proud of that i'm gonna save all of the thrift finds for another day because they honestly are pretty fucking awesome i did a really good job <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You could see like my apartment in my Instagram too. I post a lot of reels when I'm in it and just like doing the daily life. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, I already posted, but it's at Pensley Shea. It's been really fun. I've been super active on that. So that's probably like the best way to keep up with me. I haven't posted on here in two months, but I'm really wanting to be more consistent. I've literally just been working like a mad woman. Now that I have kind of the time, I feel like I'm finally in that space where like, I know my schedule, I know what's going on, I know the time and space that I have to be able to create on this platform. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it here right now. Gosh, it's just been so crazy. That's like work life and also, you know, living situations. The living situation was the last thing that needed to fall into place for me to stay in California because as I alluded to before, the housing market is fucking crazy. So luckily it's literally in the most amazing location. It's the cutest fucking thing ever. Once I get it really dialed in, I'll do a whole studio tour for you guys, maybe in a vlog or something, but there's a lot of construction going on outside. So I kind of wait, want to wait for that to be finished and then i kind of want to like clean the place up i know i hear you those are like the logistics of me staying out in california and making it work so let's talk about the emotional and spiritual side of things checking in with how i am doing <laughs> because your girl's been through it i mean like i said before when i came home i was ending a relationship with someone that i've been with off and on for four and a half years through long distance and then living in a different country with them like literally moving countries for this man I explained it in my why I fled New Zealand and like why things didn't work out and as tragic as it is it's like I'm very much so in the space that like we just weren't meant to be together if we were meant to be together he'd be out here with me you know things would be a lot easier it's really weird for me to say I feel like the best the biggest lesson that I learned when I was in New Zealand was finding my self-worth and choosing myself I think I said before that I've always been such a people pleaser and accommodating to other people's needs and like putting myself last, which I feel like is pretty common as a compassionate human being, you know? Also when our worthiness is rooted in other people, 
you know, value us. It can get a little sticky and a little self-deprecating. I wouldn't say that my relationship was self-deprecating, but I definitely did not put myself first. I do everything that I can for the people that I love, but then it comes to an extent where it's no longer serving me or it's imbalance. I guess coming home was the best decision I've made for myself because I've just been blessed with so much abundance since I've been home and I really truly believe the universe gifted me with so much light and abundance for choosing myself, which is so crazy. I never thought that I would be in this position where like choosing myself would feel so free. It was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life to end a relationship. Oh my gosh, on the plane ride home, I was like, no one's ever gonna love me like him. I'm not gonna find anyone because we're always put in that scarcity mindset, especially as a woman in her mid 20s. That, like, once you find a good one, you have to latch on. The man pool is so low, and like, who's gonna love you like the way that they love you? And who's gonna settle down with you? And blah, 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 blah. And I have to say, you guys, that is a fucking fallacy. That is the biggest limiting blockage and belief. I know now that there are so many guys out there who are in alignment to what i truly want it was like the universe was teasing me because when i got home i was very much so in on my queen shit like in my worth going to yoga every single day really dedicating every practice to myself and how magnetic i was and speaking out to the universe of like what i was seeking out in a partner and what values i really cared about and what were in alignment to my core values and just the importance of being able to communicate with a partner and be soft with a partner and hold space and share i was really looking for someone who was going to be you know spiritual i got like really gnarly in like the spiritual realm because i feel like i was lacking it in my last partnership just because it, not that it, that's a bad thing but it's just because it wasn't important to him he never grew up with spirituality and that's nothing on him i don't want to allude to anything else because i really want to like respect his privacy as well but that was just one of the things that was like really important to me that i felt like wasn't filling my cup fully in that relationship and again everyone's different that's totally okay but that was something that i truly value when i was beginning to open up my heart to other guys the person who's going to come to me is going to be this spiritual like really magnetic yogi guy you guys i had been attracting men like nobody's business i think it was because i truly was like open to it and i was like asking for it because before i've never been approached by so many men in my entire fucking life it's crazy it's crazy every single place i went in public a man was approaching me and like telling me how beautiful i was it was bonkers and i've never experienced so much male attention in my life ever it was weird and that's the power of like really following your true path and like seeking openness that's when i was like oh shit i'm like I'm pretty energetically powerful. Ask and you shall receive, sis. I swear to God. And so the first guy that I dated, we're going to talk about dating. I'm really trying to multitask here. was this like really beautiful older guy. I met him on the beach. He approached me after surfing. I thought he was like the cutest guy ever. And he was this like spiritual guy who has a startup company for this clean energy. And I was just like so in awe of him. And he took me to the hot springs in Montecito on our first date and cooked me this like amazing three course meal. And it was beautiful. He was awesome. And he did share with me so much. He was very beautiful in the way that he respected my boundaries. I've really been working on this too, and I did this in an energetic healing practice before with one of my teachers, but a huge blockage on my masculine side because I've been a people pleaser in relationships, and not only in relationships, but like hookups too, where I've gone too far in relationships with men because it's not like I wanted to say no because of scarcity mindset like oh they're not gonna like me anymore or like they're not gonna be available to me it was literally because I didn't want to hurt their feelings like because I didn't want to hurt their feelings so I hurt my own feelings and disrespected myself because I didn't want to bruise their ego because I was so worried that like I would hurt them it, like saying it out loud is crazy but I know so many women have been in my shoes before and so he was a really beautiful person to respect all of that and he was the first person that I really voiced out loud that like no I don't want to have sex with you basically it made me feel like very heard and seen and cared for and respected me so much that I really feel like was the catalyst to like my journey of being like very strong in my boundaries with men then onwards because every other guy that I you know dated in that short amount of time january to now have been like very receptive to my boundaries and i've been like very strong in my boundaries like speaking out what i want and what i'm limited to and like what i'm gonna give and 
also ending, you know, relationships. Not only really, and I don't even call them relationships, you know, like the talking stage, but like ending that, telling them why I'm ending it rather than just ghosting. Cause like I've been ghosted before multiple times and it sucks asshole. And so I didn't want to do that to other people. But again, I've done it in the past because I didn't want to hurt their feelings, but in turn ghosting really fucking hurts. I've been practicing like speaking out why I want to stop talking to people. Luckily, I think the universe has been, has been gifting me these really understanding men because like I haven't had any reactive people when I've told them that I don't no longer want to talk to them anymore, which is really nice. It's been very much so like well received and very respected. And so I'm like, thank you universe for giving me this lesson, testing me, but also giving me the grace of these beautiful men who are just so sweet. Now I'm like kind of seeing someone special. <laughs> um, I met him. Again, while I was out, I was visiting my friend at the brewery that she works with. I had just like hang out when she worked. It was just one of those things where he approached me. I thought that he was just, you know, I didn't get the vibe that he was flirting with me or anything. But then he ended up sliding into my DMs and after that and dating and seeing each other and he's really sweet. He's such a gift to me and a blessing. And I really feel like, yeah, I've just never felt more seen or heard by someone. He's like very compassionate and understanding and spiritual and he's been through a lot. I feel like when I talk about my trauma, he gets it on another level that anyone else could because he kind of went through the same thing and even like more devastating. It feels really good to be held by him and he is so romantic. He cooks me dinner and he like picks me flowers all the time in his garden that he has and it's just, yeah, I don't know where it's going and I don't know, I'm open to see what's gonna happen next, but I feel really excited and really, really lucky. Dating, dating after a breakup is really hard. I've experienced so much abundance in that field. My process of manifesting has shifted so much since I started manifesting. I went from like, you know, that new age, the secret documentary way of manifesting where it's like, just think positive thoughts and like, it's all good. To like actually doing some shadow work processing inner child work too and seeing like what are the core blockages that are like stopping me from you know experiencing abundance in this life and i realized that it's all rooted in worthiness like literally from the fear of judgment to the fear of the unknown and taking leaps of faith it all is rooted in worthiness because like if i feel like i'm worthy of the abundance that i want then i would take those risks or i would be open to finding love again because i am worth it it's just really beautiful to feel so heard and held by the universe and also to feel like so powerful energetically and like literally you guys what I have asked for, I have received, whether it was down the pipeline, you know, I've been giving, given tests from the universe and it's like, okay, well, you're going to receive, hi baby, you're going to receive this if you pass this test basically. And it's like, it's not like you can fail a test. It's every decision that you make in this life is going to be the right one. And it's going to lead you to the destiny that you want. But also listening to those signposts, doing the work of unblocking really helps and kind of speeds up the process of where you're supposed to be in your life. At least that's a theory and that's a belief on my own part. It's been working for me. It just feels really good to be stepping into that space where I'm creating things that I love and it's being well received too. That's the thing. It's like when you are in your power, or at least this is, this is a theory and this is how I feel. This is just my perception of the world. But when you're in your power and you're in alignment to like what your core values are and being authentically you, the world is your fucking oyster. Abundance just pours out towards you. It's so beautiful to be in that space where the world is just so colorful and vibrant and in the weight of the world with everything going on, continuing to go on. I mean, there's so much tragedy and I feel like I can get caught up in all the stickiness and the muck and the noise. But truly understanding the only power that I have in this world is focusing on my microcosm, just being a good person and shining my light in a way that feels authentic and true to me is what I want to focus on. I think that's the only thing that I really can do. That's the only thing that I really have power on. I'm not going to create peace in Ukraine. I can create peace in my own world and I can help co-create a really beautiful life for the people around me. That's what our purpose is, is connecting through our light and our heart space, holding space for others and being compassionate. I don't know, you guys. I just feel really powerful and really connected and 
I'm just so excited to see what else is going to come to fruition. I'm just truly allowing life to unfold and that has been so hard for me. I've always had such a tight grip on life. I really literally thought I was going to like get married, have baby. I held so tightly to that. And when that was challenged in New Zealand and literally the only option for me was to let go, which I've talked about in my past videos, that was the scariest thing I've ever done. It was devastating and heartbreaking and hard so hard but as soon as i made that choice and stepped into my power and my worthiness you guys life has been so beautiful the net was there to catch me and i see that so clearly now i got life by the fucking balls <laughs> To wrap it up, thank you for listening to my queen shit talk. Just know that you are a powerful freaking beam of light and you can have anything you want as long as you do the work and you're open to it and you feel that worthiness. Just a resource to share with you, the podcast Expanded has so helped me step into my worth and also helped me do some inner child work and unblocking. I know that they have some like works. Literally listening to that podcast has changed my perspective on not only manifestation, but how I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling and why I feel blocked and why I wasn't manifesting at the speed that I was supposed to. I just feel so fucking good now. Awesome. It's a really good listen. They have so many podcasts. I highly recommend that. It literally changed my life. So I'm going to wrap it up here. I've been talking for like ever and ever and ever and I don't want to bore you anymore. More, but thank you so much for still being here and for holding space for me and for listening to me It feels really good to be in California and to be here. I miss my family so much. They watch my YouTube videos Hey mom and dad. <laughs> I just I don't think I've ever felt this in tuned in alignment and in my power ever in my life and it feels so good and everyone deserves to feel like this Obviously, there's still ebbs and flows of life. I have my low moments Olive. This construction is really doing me dirty right now. I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you for growing along with me. It is such an honor and a pleasure to be like talking to you right now. One last reminder, click the link in my description box if you're wanting to get a few pieces for your mama during this Mother's Day sale for Anna Louise. And who wouldn't want sustainable, beautiful, timeless jewelry? I mean, I know that I do. I've been a <laughs> and I'm so grateful for the Ana Louise team for working with me and my crazy schedule. So yeah, if you're curious and you're needing some gift inspiration, definitely check them out. So worth it. And there's something for every style on there. Thank you so much again for being here and for being patient through the construction, through crazy Olive. Literally a psychopath. Olive, you need to stop. You need to stop. I'm going to love you and leave you there. Thank you so much for joining me, for being patient with me, and for waiting for me to give you this update. I can't wait to update you more and share more of what's going on in my life and all the abundance and maybe how I've gotten to the place that I have and like the unblocking techniques that I've done. I don't know. If you're into energetics, leave a comment below if you're wanting to see how I'm manifesting, like directly what I did, the rituals that I did, meditations, all that good stuff. Let me know because I'd be really happy to share this wisdom. I don't want to say wisdom stuff. I'm not a guru. I'm not anyone. I'm just a fucking girl in Southern California who's like on her queen shit right now. So let me know if you want me to share. Can't wait to show you what I got thrift finds. Again, thank you so much for being here, for loving me through it all. I love you guys so much. I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your week and a beautiful day. Yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.